Hi, my name is Dr. Andrew Bernard from Michigan Tech University. I'm here today at uh, PCB Piezotronics to give you a demonstration on the concept of anti-aliasing and we'll start by taking a look at a little bit of the theory. So when we sample an acoustic wave, we're taking snapshots of that wave at discrete points in time. So in this example we have a 6 hertz acoustic wave in black that we're trying to measure. And we have our sample rate set at 8 hertz. That means we're going to take 8 samples of that sine wave in one second. And you can see those samples in red dots on the screen. So our Nyquist frequency is 4 hertz. That means anything above 4 hertz will be aliased. So what happens when we sample this 6 hertz wave? If we connect the red circles using a sine wave, we end up with the blue curve, which is a 2 hertz sine wave. In reality, the signal we want to measure is 6 hertz, and this phenomenon is called aliasing. So this is a difficult phenomenon in data measurement. And if we look at the plot on the right, you can see the actual frequency versus the measured frequency for an alias signal. So up into the Nyquist frequency, or F sub n, you will measure the actual frequency. Above the Nyquist frequency, you start to measure frequencies below the Nyquist frequency. So as I increase in frequency, my observed frequency is actually decreasing. And that's what we'll demonstrate. So how do we prevent this? We want to use a data acquisition system when we're taking audio data that has a built-in anti-aliasing filter. So an anti-aliasing filter is an analog filter that goes in front of the analog to digital converter in your data system. And all this does is filter off the high frequency components so that they don't alias back and corrupt your low frequency components. If we look at the region just beyond the cutoff frequency of this filter, as shown here, we can see that we still may alias back with some non-trivial level. So typically we don't take our data right up to the Nyquist frequency. A lot of times we'll use a factor of the sample rate divided by 2.56 to give us, give us a safety margin on the roll off of the analog filter. Because very high frequency signals will be rolled off a lot with the filter and not contribute uh, after they're aliased back into the frequency region of interest. So now let's take a look at the equipment we'll be using for this demo. We'll be using two PCB Model 378 VO2 half-inch free field condenser microphones. One of those microphones is wired into the laptop through a 480 EO9 signal conditioner. The difference between the data systems is the 9234 has a built-in anti-aliasing filter and the USB 6000 has no anti-aliasing filter. It's a strict digitizer. So we'll be able to see the effects of aliasing on the USB 6000. We'll gradually increase the frequency of the sound coming from the speakers, and you'll be able to hear that in the demo. However, after the frequency is increased above the Nyquist frequency, in this case that's 2560 hertz, you'll see the measured frequency peak start to decrease on the spectrum from the microphone without the anti-aliasing filter. Using the microphone with the anti-aliasing filters, we can see that after the frequency increases above the Nyquist frequency, the spectral peak will disappear, which is the desired behavior of our measurement system. Now we'll start the demo. So on the screen, you'll see on the left-hand side the plot that will have the data with the anti-aliasing filters from this data acquisition system. And on the right-hand side will be data without the anti-aliasing filter from this data acquisition system. We will start at a frequency of 500 hertz and increase by increments of 250 hertz. The sample rate is 5120 hertz, which makes our Nyquist frequency half that, or 2560 hertz. So as we approach that Nyquist frequency, watch what happens uh, in the plot on the right-hand side without the anti-aliasing filters. Pay attention to the peaks in the frequency spectrum. So now you see the frequency on the right hand side appears to be going down 
but the frequency that you're hearing is clearly increasing. And that's the effect of aliasing. Now as we get close to zero frequency for our alias signal, it'll start to increase again. So right now we have a 6,500 hertz signal, but it appears that we're measuring something around 14, a little bit less than 1,400 hertz, which is clearly not correct. So that's the reason when you're taking acoustic data that you always want to ensure that you're using an analog anti-aliasing filter, either built into your data acquisition system or using a filter in front of your data acquisition system. So I hope you found this demonstration informative, and I'll see you next time. For more information, visit pcb.com or give us a call at 1-800-828-8840.